Okay, today's example, we're going to talk using calculus on how to do some basic curve sketching. We're going to be able to determine without using a calculator how a function can increase, decrease, have some relative extrema or maxes or mins, and its concavity if it curves up or down on its point of inflection. So we start off with the first derivative where we will have see here y prime 3x squared plus 6x that's just from the power rule when we take the first derivative and we set it equal to 0 we can factor out a 3x have x plus 2 left over and that means now the zeros of the first derivative give us our critical values at x equals 0 and negative 2 now to help us with the intervals for increasing and decreasing, we set up a little mini number line here from negative 2 to 0, which helps us figure out that we go from negative infinity to negative 2, then from negative 2 to 0, then from 0 to infinity. So now what we do is we pick test values for the first derivative so I'll pick f prime of negative 3, f prime of negative 1, and f prime of 1. And we evaluate these in the first derivative. Now, we really don't care what the exact number is, but we do care what the sign is, either being positive or negative. So if I plug in negative 3 right here, that's going to be a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So by being positive in the first derivative, that tells us on the interval from negative infinity to negative 2, we're going to be increasing. If I plug in negative 1, that's going to be a negative times a positive. That's a negative. So therefore, I'm going to be decreasing on the interval from negative 2 to 0. And by plugging in 1, I'm going to have a positive times a positive, which is a positive. Therefore, I'm back to increasing. So there's the increasing and decreasing intervals for that function. Now, by the first derivative test, if I have a change from increasing to decreasing, so at negative 2 there, I know I'm going from increasing to decreasing. That means I'm going to have a max. So at negative 2, comma, and then to get my y value, anytime I need the exact y value, i got to go back to the original function. And so by plugging in negative 2 here, do a little quick math here, negative 2, cubed plus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 2. That's going to wind up being negative 8. And then 4 times 3, that's 12, minus 2. So that's negative 10 plus 12. That's going to be wind up being 2. So I know that at negative 2, 2, I'm going to have a max. Over on the next two intervals, I go from decreasing to increasing. That tells me that I'm going to have a minimum. So at 0, comma, and then plugging in 0 here, so at the original function, 0, 0, and then negative 2. So at 0, negative 2, I know I'm going to have a minimum. So that's how I'm able to get my extrema using the first derivative test. Now from there, I can continue now using the second derivative, because that will help me determine concavity, or how it's shaped. So the second derivative will be 6x plus 6. Again, getting that from over here, the first derivative, I just take the derivative again. I set this equal to 0, so I can actually factor out a 6, have x plus 1. And now I know that not critical values like the first derivative, but these are actually possible points of inflection. So I know that at x equals negative 1, I have a possible POI. And I do the same process. I put negative 1 on number line, which tells me I have two intervals from negative infinity to negative 1 and from negative 1 to infinity. And I know now that if I evaluate in the second derivative, f prime negative 2, f double prime of 0, I go up to the second derivative where it's factored. That'll be easy. Again, I'm looking for the sign. So if I plug in negative 2, I'm going to have 6 times a negative number, which is going to be negative. This tells me that I'm going to be concave down. And then I put in 0. 
And 0 here is going to give me 6 times 1, which is going to be 6. That's a positive number. That tells me I'm going to be concave up. So there's my concavity intervals for that as well. So now knowing that I do have a change from concave down to concave up, I do know that my point of inflection is actually at negative 1. And again, and again, to get the y value, I got to go back to the original function. So that's going to be negative 1 plus 3 minus 2. That winds up being 0. So I have a point of inflection at negative 1, 0. Now the great thing about this is actually I could check now with my graphing calculator or just graph it in whatever utility you have. I go over and I look at the graph and I see if all the data is matched up. So I can tell right now by looking at this graph that with this being the origin right here, I know that I was increasing from negative infinity to negative 2. And then from negative 2 to 0, I'm decreasing again. So there's the, there's the increasing, decreasing, and then back to increasing here from 2 to infinity. I'm increasing, and that's exactly what we wrote out over here with our work. And then we also know that I have a max, like we stated, at negative 2, 2. We had our max. And we also had our minimum at 0, negative 2, just like it worked out. And then we knew that our, our concavity, we can see that we're going from concave down to concave up with our point of inflection being what we stated over here as negative 1, 0. And actually, here's negative 1, 0 right here. And we can see that's where we change from being concave down to concave up. So there's a quick example there of using calculus to determine some properties uh, for the curve for the function of y equals x cubed uh, plus 3x squared minus 2.